Hello everyone, this is Gio and uh, I decided to try something different. After writing blog posts for years and even a book, uh, I'm gonna try recording some videos now and see what you folks uh, think of them. The very first video that I wanna share with you is um, a quick introduction to the test-driven development workflow in a SwiftUI application. To test SwiftUI application, you don't test SwiftUI code. To test a SwiftUI app, you do not write unit tests for the SwiftUI views. You extract all the logic, all the content generation logic outside of SwiftUI, and uh, you test that in isolation. What does that? How, how does that look like? Well, see here we have the the template. Uh, SwiftUI app that actually generates for us, uh, that it just prints hello world. Let's make it a bit more interesting and let's say that um, if there is a user in the app, um, or rather if uh, we pass a username to the, to the view, it, it is going to say hello name, and uh, otherwise if there's no username, it's going to just say hello world. Okay. How can we do that? Well, one option would be to write it in line, and uh, I might record the video to show you why I don't think that's a good uh, idea. Uh, the option I advocate for is to uh, extract the logic, the if there's a user, write a hello user, otherwise else, write hello world, in a, uh, like a SwiftUI free piece of logic, and um, implement that with unit test with test-driven development. And I'm gonna show you how. So the first step, of course, whenever we do test-driven development is to write a test, no, it's to think. How are we gonna write this code? Well, I imagine it's gonna be a function. It could be inside an object, but just to keep it simple, let's just make a free function. A function that I'm gonna call something like hello, and uh, it can take an optional string as input, do is, is, is work inside and spit out a string that then the Swift UI view can can render. Now that I have this plan in mind, I can move on and, and write a test. We already have this template test, uh, which uh, we can just get rid of and replace with the scaffold for our own test. Okay, we know that um, the this hello world function should have two different behaviors. One when the input is, when there's no user, just say hello world. The other one is when there is a user, say hello user. So let's write um, the um, definition of two tests to verify this behavior. They could be comments, or the way I like to do it is just write the empty test functions. What we done? What we have here is called a test list. It is a list of the tests that we expect to to write to drive the implementation of our code. The value of having the test list is well. First of all, it makes us think about the different facets of the of the behavior that we want to implement, and second, it gives us a thirty thousand feet view of the different tests that we have at our disposal, so that we can be strategic with where to start. And the best place to start is the, a test that you are confident you can make pass easily. The reason that is a good test to start is because it lowers the barrier to entry to write all the scaffolding code uh, so that you can just get that out of the way and then focus on the details of the implementation in the tests that are afterwards. Okay, In this case, I think the... The simplest test, uh, they're both simple because this is a simple example, but anyway, the simplest test would be the one with no input because I can just make it return an hard-coded value. So well, let's, let's do that. Let's define like a stub implementation for, for our function. And this is just enough so that the compiler is going to be happy and is not going to annoy us uh, by saying, hey, you haven't defined that when we implement it. The next step is to write an expectation. So I expect that if I call this hello function uh, with no input, what we done, nil username, is going to return just hello world. 
XCT assert equal is the um, API that XCT provides to assert equality. And uh, on the first argument, we just put our uh, system under test, the code that we are testing. And then on the second, the, the, expect the expected output. Now, before running the test, let's say it out loud uh, whether we expect it to fail or not. You don't really need to say it out loud. Uh, if you're working by yourself, you can just say it in your head, but like right now, between the, the, the two of us, let's just say it out loud. Uh, I expect this test to fail. Why is it useful to have your own expectation on the behavior of the test? Because if the test doesn't do what you expect it to do, that's a great moment to take a step back and um, um, go look for the reason why the test didn't behave the, the way it was supposed to and learn about the, the system that you're working with. So let's run the test with command U and I expect them to fail. And uh, they, they did fail because obviously they, they, we're just returning an empty string. So let's make them pass. And the simplest way to do it is to just return the value that the test is expecting. This is called fake it. I expect the test to pass now. And it does. Excellent. We went from a red test, a test that wasn't passing, red, to a test that works, green. And um, the final step in the test even development workflow is red, green, refactor. We can take, a, again, a step back and uh, look at the code and say, can I make it better? Um, well, obviously, this it just returns another coded value, so of course we could make it better. But I would recommend not uh, investing your time in it right now and just let uh, the necessity to write code to make the next test pass um, drive the need to write uh, a real implementation. So let's move on. I wrote this test, so like I, you give name as input and uh, you should say hello name uh, as the output. Uh, let's run the test and I expect them to fail. All right, test failed um, and uh, again, that's not a surprise, we were expecting that. How can we make them pass? Well, we can just do something like let's check if we have an input and if we do, let's return it in the, in the string, otherwise let's return the fallback string. So, With this implementation done, I expect the test uh, to work, to be both green. Yeah, my code is working. Happy days. Again, we went from the red state to the green state, and now it's time to ask the question, can we make the code better? Look, for such a simple function, I think this code is okay, but just for fun, let's uh, play around with it so we, I can show you how easy it is to uh, refactor code when you have a test suite that verifies the code's behavior behind you. I can see a bit of duplication here. Uh, hello, this is hello, exclamation mark, uh, sort of template that is uh, duplicated. So let's uh, try to, to remove it. Uh, for example, we can... Um, use name or word as the value to interpolate in a template string. I expect this test to pass, and uh, they do, which uh, validates uh, my, my refactor. I change the implementation of the code without uh, any effect on, the, on, on its behavior. I don't like this implementation too much, it's so long, so look, can we make it a one-liner? And I think we can, if we compromise a bit on the on the readability. We can um, map on this optional value so that if we if there is a value, we get it. Otherwise, we just say um, world. And actually, now that I think about it, we don't really need to do this silly map, we can just do name or world. I expect the test to pass again. And they do. Excellent. And now we can uh, get rid of, of that code up there. Run the test again. And they still pass. Sweet. Now, 
it is the time to bring it all together and move this code into the into the Swift UI layer. Um, as you might have seen, I wrote it all in the test. Uh, this is something that I find useful when working with little pieces of code that are, that are new. Instead of creating the new file, just get started in the test so that you can move a bit faster. Now let's add the, the, the new file. Here I move the function into its own file. And um, now let's go use it into the into the view. And this is it. Um, obviously, this was a very simple example, but that's the gist of how to fit test-driven development into a Swift UI application. To test a Swift UI application, don't test the Swift UI code. Extract all the content generation into Swift UI free components and test them in isolation and leave the Swift UI views responsible only to declare the layout, synchronize the data, and uh, feed them uh, an input state made up of those uh, Swift UI free component that you've implemented this in isolation. Um, in the next videos, we'll see how to take this simple example like a, a step forward introducing a, a, a view model and some uh, state in, in the application. I hope you found this useful and um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that if you want to learn more about uh, test-driven development uh, you should check out my book test-driven development in Swift you can find it at uh, uh, tddinswift.com and if you want to get in touch you have some comments um, just drop them below or get in touch on Twitter at uh, Mokajio. Uh, thank you. Uh, see you next time. Ciao, ciao.